Hello everybody. So I'm going to just do a quick demo here for those of you coming to the next workshop. And don't worry if you don't know all of the materials that I'm using right now, but uh, I, I'm going to just try and show you some of the main tools that are on your supply list uh, to familiarize you with them, but I will give you a lot more information when we actually meet in person. I'm just putting a little bit of this cold wax medium near each of my paints and each of these colors is on your supply list. So I've got cadmium red medium, I have titanium white, ivory black, this is Indian yellow, and this is French ultramarine blue. This is my cold wax medium and my spatula. So I've put a little dab by each pile here of paint and I have several palette knives that I use at a time. I do recommend, you know, get a couple because it's nice to not have to keep cleaning them every time you want to change to a different color. Um, if, you, if you really love this medium, um, is it, you know, it's kind of hard not to once you get to know it. You're kind of painting with this wonderful, luscious consistency of wax with oil. Then, it, you know, it is an investment anytime you try a medium and you know, um, it's just when you have enough spatulas and you don't have to keep cleaning them, it's one less thing. It's going to save you some time, so it's kind of an efficiency thing. So I'm just going to leave each palette knife near its color. This is my Indian yellow. It's a lovely transparent yellow, very high in oil content. So I'll leave that one there. And then this is my Cad Red, which, you know, I when I put this down, I. I'm trying to be a little bit careful as to how much I add, and I'll explain that in the workshop. So there's that. You really want to mix in that cold wax, just like that. And grab one more palette knife. Now I'm painting on a panel. It's called an ampersand encaustic board cradled panel. But you know you can paint on Arches oil paper. Uh, there are many different surfaces. There's um, multimedia artboard. And you know, there are other kinds of cradle panels, but the beauty of this one is that it's already prepared with this special gesso, and so you get to see how you like that. Now, one thing I really want to show you right now is um, how these mark making tools work. Um, when I started painting, I just like to mark it up with um, different kinds of thicknesses. Um, you know, some are really dark. Like this is just a china marker. You might have one of those at home. And here is my one of my favorite pencils is the um, the Lyra. That's on your list. And you know, again, you can get a real thin line. You can get a real heavy line. But I start a lot of my work out this way. Here's just a number two pencil. So again, and this is a carpenter's pencil. It's the, the flat kind that you get at any hardware store. Um, this can be kind of fun to play with too. So feel free to bring that if you happen to have that at home. You don't have to buy it specifically for this workshop. This is the um, Lyra, I don't know how you really say it, but Graphit, Graphit Creedy. It's made in Germany, I believe. But I use this one a lot. So I'm just really marking this up so you can kind of see how I do things. And then this is the art graph tool, which is water soluble. And let's see, I do have some water here. I can show you, put a little bit of water in my palette. When you take this art graph and you just, you can see how it makes that lovely <laughs> puddle of, you know, um, just really, really nice darks that you can get and um, you don't have to use it water soluble but you can so that's something else that was on your supply list okay 
and here's my Stabilo the 8046 aquarellable pencil it has a just a really nice dark I also put on your list Cray Paws which is very inexpensive um, kids play with this stuff um, and it, but um, just so you know, uh, very compatible with the cold wax medium, and so you can kind of play with those. Here's the yellow. Okay, so I've made literally, you know, kind of a lot of marks on here. That's how I start. And then what I'll typically do is so I'm going to move all these mark making tools over here. And make some room. So this again is my cold wax medium and I'm going to take a little bit more of that. I'm going to use my silicone. This is the Messermeister tool. It's sort of a hemisphere and it's got that blade inside, that piece of metal. And typically what I do after I've done the mark making on any panel is I'll take um, quite a, just a little bit of this cold wax medium now I don't care, it, again, I don't mind if things start to smear. What I'm doing though is I'm just kind of locking in some of the marks that I just made. So um, on the surface it, it's um, going to be ready to take on anything that I do once I put this. I, can, I don't have to put this cold max medium on right now, but I'm just trying to see what's going to blur. Like sometimes I like to see like with this um, art graph stick here that was water soluble, I don't always know if it's going to get messy or not when I do this with the wax. So it's kind of nice to know. Now notice too, with this tool, I can go like this and put a ton of that wax on in the same way I can take it off. That is the beauty of a silicone tool. And that's true for um, the, this is like a, one and a half inch flat. You can do the same thing with this. You see how you can move it around and that's what I wanted you to see with this demo is why it's such a versatile and wonderful tool because the cold wax medium mixed with you know in my case I'm, I'm adding a little bit of a a gambling product called Galkid Gel but the point is that it's it's a very um, textural medium and so it's nice to have tools that work really well with this medium and it just turns out that these actually work a little better than brushes so it's kind of a whole new world in this medium and they are optional though I mean you can get by with a lot of different things for putting on this wax but anyways that would be that particular tool now again with this Messermeister tool I've mixed up this Indian yellow and I'm going to just show you what happens, how nicely it can apply wax and the cold wax medium. And you can again see, you can put it on thick and then you can take it off and you know move it around. It's just this great tool for uh, playing around. And I'm just going to cover this. You can kind of see how basically I can <laughs> make all these very interesting geometric marks because of the fact that it is a straight edge and so in my work I like a sense of geometry as well as more of an organic feel um, and you have the option you don't have to cover the entire board you can see how I lifted it now it's almost white there but um, so you have full control of how you want to cover that so let's see what haven't I shown you that's the Messermeister tool um, again with this with this particular tool the silicone tool you can you know clean it with a paper towel and all I ever use is cooking oil to clean my tools with so if you have a bottle like this at home has a tip on it um, easy to travel with it's not too big fill, fill it like halfway with cooking oil you don't need that much and let me just show you, I haven't shown you the brayer yet, so let me just show you that. Um, I will use, 
How about a little bit of this red? So when you charge a brayer, this is my smaller one, but you kind of want to make this area on your palette and keep rolling it in different directions until it's kind of covered evenly with a thin layer and you'll start to feel a certain tackiness when you've got it covered, uh, the, the roller covered with the medium evenly. So here, you know, you can start to add various layers of this wonderful luscious medium and so having a couple of rollers is definitely nice. You can kind of see that this is a narrow roller and if I had a really wider roller I could obviously make a cover more area but I, um, I often like to disguise the edge but you can see how kind of sensitive that is and I'm really not putting much pressure on the roller because after all I've got a wet layer of that Indian yellow underneath so I need to be a little careful. I'm kind of working wet into wet but you can kind of see how gradually you can cover with these differing veils of I know, very you know faint, there's not a lot of paint on there right now and so it's kind of just fun to play with that. Um, that's how that's looking. And the other thing you can do with, um, with a brayer, which is really cool, I'll take my bigger one and let's say that I want to just make some sort of a pattern on here. And again, we'll go over all this in class, but again, it's just to show you why it is that some of these things are on your list. I can just do some random pattern with my brayer. And now I've got these little dots of blue. And they're kind of in different sizes. And I'm going to put them around the roller and then you'll see what happens here. So now I've got this and I can um, start to roll it. Maybe I'll start up here. And as it rolls on the surface it puts these pieces down and then I can go this way. It's a way of kind of um, repeating these marks and that's kind of fun. So I've got that. You can always go back in again then with your marks. You know, I also have, um, let's see here, I have this woody that's, that's white and you know, I can always go back in, make marks that way. I can take an eraser. Erasers are great because look what happens here. You know, it, it actually becomes a drawing tool um, like this. So again, if you have any, just these number two pencils that you use in basically first grade, second grade, third grade, um, they're all in, in the stores now because kids are going to school. And, you know, it's just, again, I'm making a mess, but as you'll see, there's a reason for doing this and I don't want you to worry about it. This seems like it's really um, kind of strange. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> things become clearer as we talk about color and design, but I'll tell you that in the very beginning of the workshop, your main goal is to just let go and play. That's going to be your number one job. So don't worry about um, things looking pretty. Don't worry about trying to make everything, you know, um, a masterpiece. That's really not why, um, you know, we do these workshops. We're coming to learn about new techniques, different ways to move paint around, different ways to make effects. And um, I think you'll all really enjoy the process. The first day we're really going to focus on having fun. And then the next day, we're going to focus on um, kind of letting that left brain have a little bit more say as far as, you know, what to do with the mess we made on Monday. And it's, a, it's always a challenge, but um, we're just going to have a lot of fun. And let me just use one of these silicone tools to show you again how you can go back into this and make some very, very nice marks. Um, because this is a, a, let's see, it's a one inch, I believe, yeah, one inch. You can actually lift a one inch mark like that. So now you can kind of see why it is that I, I really like these tools. 
I can basically reveal what I had before um, that was underneath the red paint. Okay, so I hope that's helpful to you. You've seen how I've used spatulas, brayers, the Messermeister tool, the cold wax medium, and I've explained this, um, why you need the cooking oil. And so basically that's it. And I look forward to meeting all of you. I can't wait. We're going to have a lot of fun. And if you have any questions, uh, please just let me know. Thanks very much. These are the table risers. These are listed on your supply list as well for those people who like to work at a little bit taller table height. Most table heights are around 29 to 39, 30 inches. And if you would like them more at a counter height, like in your kitchen, then it, it's really um, a good idea to get something like this because they're, they're very packable, they're very lightweight, they're hollow, as you can see, and they stack. So, you know, each person could bring their own. It doesn't take that much room in your suitcase. And um, you can get different heights. And, you know, if you look on Amazon and just look for either, uh, I think they're called furniture or bed risers. They have different names, but the point is they come in um, packs of four and they're not too expensive.